So today I want to talk about something a little bit different. I want to talk about Stefan Molyneux and Taylor Swift. And you're probably wondering, how in the hell are Stefan Molyneux and Taylor Swift connected? Taylor Swift, the, you know, artist of the decade, and Stefan Molyneux, a noted, you know, far-right individual on YouTube and in other online spaces. How are they connected? Well, this recent tweet that just dropped answers that question. Stefan Molyneux says the following. I can't believe Taylor Swift is about to turn 30. She still looks so young. It's strange to think that 90% of her eggs are already gone. 97% by the time she turns 40. I hope she thinks about having kids before it's too late. She'd be a fun mom, smiley face. So isn't that just really creepy? You have an old man talking about a younger woman, talking specifically about her impending infertility, how she's wasting her eggs, how she's wasting her time, how she's losing that fleeting opportunity to fulfill her societal role in becoming a mother. And it just has this really, really creepy, frankly, misogynistic air. And this isn't just a one-off thing. This is one of Molyneux's go-to themes, go-to constructs, which is that women in modern societies fail to understand the consequences of their fertility. Put another way, he feels that women now don't understand that their fertility is their primary quote-unquote bargaining chip in terms of finding stability, love, success, partnership, and on and on and on. And that a lot of women waste their 20s and their 30s, and they don't find that partnership, and then the pool of men is smaller in quantity and quality because all the good men have found young, fertile women to pair themselves with. So as he would often put it, men age like wine, women age like milk, which is to say that men get better with time and that women spoil rather quickly. And it's rooted again in this general misogynistic notion that pervades so many nooks and crannies of, you know, alt-right, incel, you know, men going their own way, you know, pick up artist culture, you know, general misogynistic far-right places on the internet, which is that, you know, women today just don't understand the consequences of their short-sighted and selfish actions, and they're failing to realize that there's good men that they need to pair up with now, and that they'll all be sorry and sad when they turn 40, and they're childless, and they're husbandless, and then we'll have all the hot young women to ourselves, and that'll show those women, which is almost sort of a revenge fantasy by a lot of these alt-right, far-right misogynistic men, which is that the women who are rejecting them in their 20s are, you know, are going to pay the price for that rejection in a generation when they don't have that husband to take care of them and they don't have that baby that, according to these men, is essential to their very meaning as a human being, as an individual, as a fulfilled person. And this is so troubling. Not only is it creepy, not only is it just really weird to have Stefan Molyneux go on the internet, go on twitter.com and talk about how a younger woman who he doesn't know is losing her fertility and she still looks young and beautiful, but beneath that facade is a woman rotting like milk in his parlance and that she needs to snap out of it and find a man soon so she can be a good mom. Like this, not only is that just creepy, it really reinforces this notion that women are identified by their status as childbearers. Now, there's nothing wrong with women being mothers and being partners and being wives. And there's nothing wrong with women who choose to live predominantly as mothers or as housewives or in support of a partner. There's nothing wrong with that. Feminism really is about empowering women in the choices they make, even if those choices lead them to a childless and unfulfilled life, quote unquote, and, you know, success in the boardroom, or it leads them to a rather, quote unquote, traditional life where they live primarily as wives and mothers. But Molyneux offers no such nuance. He really does suggest, and those like him suggest, that women will be predominantly unhappy and unfulfilled and regretful if they don't latch onto a man now before they lose that fertility. 
And it really reinforces the idea. Women are here to be mothers. Women are here to be wives. Women are here to produce the next generation. And women that don't do that are fundamentally failures in the grand game of life. So I want people to understand the underlying narratives of what Molyneux is saying. It is creepy. It is weird. People calling it out on social media as I speak are calling it out for the creepiness and weirdness. 100% on point to do so. But remember how this is rooted in really ugly cultures that predate the internet, of course, but that are predominant in many right-wing misogynistic places on YouTube on Twitter, on 4chan, on parts of Reddit, and on and on and on, which is that these women are just paying the price for their insolence in not dating the right men, the committed men in their 20s and 30s. And it helps to justify a lot of misogyny, as I've noted. These women deserve to be sad. These women deserve to be infertile and alone. They were the ones that slept with all the chads, and the chads can only commit to one woman, and they were left out. And now all the beta men who were beta in their 20s and 30s now have jobs and stability, and now they can pick from a younger woman, and now you're left you know, without a seat at the game of musical chairs. And it's like a ha 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 moment. You deserve all your pain and suffering. It's really part of this broad dehumanization of women. Women are dehumanized in this process because women exist for these men as tools of fertility and of companionship, but only in relation to the needs and desires of men and to a society that's defined by male interests and desires. And when women choose to express themselves either by choosing not to have children or by choosing not to sleep with them, these justifications are needed to justify the hateful words they say about women, young women, old women, anybody in between. It helps to justify the fundamental hate they have for women. That's why this goes beyond just creepiness. And that's why our response has to be, yes, make fun of stupid shit when you hear it from the alt-right, but connect it to the real pressing critiques of those movements, of those spaces, of those quote-unquote intellectuals and how they perpetuate the hate and dehumanization of women.